Retouching shiny skin can be a pain. In today's video, we're talking about the Retouch For Me Mattifier plugin, which helps us alleviate skin shine, and then we'll be using the portrait volumes to add a bit more pop in that macro dodge and burn to our subject so that we can move on with the creative process in compositing, what have you. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll see you in Photoshop. All right, here we are in Photoshop, uh, taking a look at this photo of Ray. Now, when we zoom into her face here, we can see that there is a bit of skin shine. Now, at this point, I'm wanting to get rid of some of the skin shine so that I can layer that with portrait volumes and get a bit more of a macro dodge and burn look to this while still maintaining some of the nice highlights, but crushing some of the harsh ones that we have here and matting those out a bit. So what we'll do is duplicate our background layer and we can name this one matte. Now we'll head up to filter, retouch for me, and then retouch for me mattifier. Now with the mattifier plugin doing its thing already, we can see that we have the auto adjustment already happening here and down on the bottom left hand corner. If we use our scroll wheel to zoom in, we can see that now we've reduced the shiny areas in her face almost a little bit too much. Let's zoom in a little bit. We can see that it's quite a bit much. We see that it gets weird. Now, just like the other retouch for me plugins, we can use this blend slider to really fine tune the results that we want here. So I don't want to get rid of the effects or the shininess completely. I don't want her to have fully matte skin, but what this does is allows us to make some nice adjustments to how much this plugin is doing to our image. Now, if we press the space bar, we have our before and after, and we can see that we've done a pretty nice job here of mattifying her skin. Now we can also take this down a little bit Generally speaking, I like a blend of around 50%. Just crushes some of those harsher highlights. And now we're ready to bring this back in as its own layer, non-destructive workflow. So in the top right corner, we'll see that we have a make mask checkbox, and then we can click apply. Now with this applied, we'll see that we now have our quick and easy adjustment that we can use to build upon using the portrait volumes. Now I'll create a stamp visible layer, call this PV for portrait volumes. And then we can head back up to filter, retouch for me, and then retouch for me portrait volumes. All right, now after it's done doing its initial calculation, again, in the bottom left-hand side, we're on auto. We can head to the close-up portrait half length portrait or the full length portrait just like any of their other plugins but we'll zoom in here a moment and take a look at what's been done to the face specific space bar to preview the before and after before and after and now we have a really nice result where the highlights in her face aren't too harsh but the portrait volumes is coming back in giving a really nice macro dodge and burn to this and just enhancing the look of her face as well as the rest of her body here. And we can see those effects once we look at the before and after. We can take our blend amount and drag this all the way for a bit more harsh of an effect. 200%, we can see how harsh that's getting there, but this really does a nice job of giving us a pop at various levels, depending on what we need. Now, for my type of work, more of the creative composites, I like to sit a bit higher and then tone these down as I start to adjust the balance between the different layers that I have in my composite. Again, we'll head up to the right-hand side, soft light layer, and then click apply. Now, once this is done and wrapped up, we can see our nice soft light layer here and exactly what the plugin has adjusted. We can change the blend mode from normal down to soft light for the portrait volume layer. And now we'll see here that we have our portrait volumes and we have our matte layer that are both working together in a non-destructive method. Still, one of my favorite parts about the retouch for me process is that you can work non-destructively and start to kick out these individual layers. Now, at this point, I am more than ready to start cutting my subject out from the background and creating a nice composite around her. And there we have it. There's a brief look at Retouch For Me's new mattifier plugin with use in the Portrait Volumes plugin as well, and how the two of them can work great together to reduce some of the skin shine that we may have on our subject and then add a layer of macro dodge and burn for a really nice pop and dramatic feel to our subjects. Now, 
Again, this is one of those things for me that really helps expedite some processes. I could go through the frequency separation or toning this down with curves and then painting in different masks. The older I get, <laughs> the more that I feel I get tired of performing the same monotonous tasks over and over again to get a nice result. Retouch for me comes in clutch and just takes a lot of that workload and provides a nice non-destruction set of actions that allow me to expedite from the technical to the creative side. And there you have it. So. If you like what you see here and want to try out the Mattifier plugin from Retouch for me, links down in the description for 20% off. Until next time, create more, say less, and stay creative. I'll see you then.